story time about how my boyfriend's ex is threatening to have me raped. This girl is so crazy, I'm actually scared of her. My boyfriend and I started dating three months ago. Everything started when we made it official on Instagram. But here's the thing, my boyfriend never told me that he had a crazy ass ex. He just told me that she was intense. But as soon as he posted about me on his Instagram, she followed me on three separate accounts and started stalking my Instagram. That very same day, I started getting these weird ominous text messages. For two weeks straight, this girl pretended to be another guy. And this guy was basically saying that he knew where I lived, and that he knew what car I drove, where I worked, and that he wanted to see me in person so that he could profess his love to me. After about a week of getting those messages, I showed him to my boyfriend. And that's when this man tells me that he needs to confess something. That his ex-girlfriend before me is crazy and that she has been stalking him for six months. And that the person behind those messages was probably her. He told me to ignore the messages and that she would eventually stop. But then I started getting messages from another account. And these messages were way more aggressive. They sent me a picture of me walking my dog in the park. And that they wanted to kidnap me? Of course I went to the police. Part 2 is up. Story time about how my boyfriend's crazy ex is threatening to have me raped. After two weeks of her pretending to be other people and sending me crazy messages, I finally went to the police. That's when the police told me that there was no way of actually knowing if she was the one that sent the messages. And that there was no actual crime committed because she hadn't hurt me physically. Um, okay. That's when I forced my boyfriend to tell me what had happened between them. So apparently my boyfriend and her had dated for two years on and off. She wanted to get married. And my boyfriend said yes eventually. But she took that as him saying yes and she even started planning a wedding when she started planning the wedding my boyfriend told her that she was crazy and yes he used the word crazy he broke up with her and abandoned her so i see why she would be really upset but why is she taking it out on me that's when i told my boyfriend he needed to tell her to leave me alone he called her right there in front of me and she acted like she had done nothing she completely denied that she was the one sending the messages 20 minutes after they hung up i got an email and the email was filled with disturbing images of women being essayed and at the bottom of the email it said this is gonna happen to you i was terrified part three is up Story time about how my boyfriend's crazy ex is threatening to have me raped. That's when I saw the email that was filled with disturbing images of women being essayed. And at the bottom it said that it would happen to me. Of course I showed my boyfriend the email. Then he told me to put on my shoes because we were going to go to his ex's house. I was terrified. We get to his ex's house and knock on her door. She opens the door and instantly hugs us. Then she proceeds to act like a friend. He showed her the emails and all the messages and she flat out denied it. And get this. Then she says that someone is trying to set her up. And that she's not crazy enough to do something like that. We finally left her house and for a few days I didn't get any messages until the messages started up and even worse this time it was from that same account before the messages said that they would kidnap me and do stuff to me in their car and that I would never know who it was because they'd be wearing a mask for the next five days the messages continued it got to the point where I wasn't even leaving my house my boyfriend and family had to accompany me everywhere my boyfriend and family are both scared I want to expose her so badly but what if she does something to me what if she hired some strange guy to follow me and kidnap me and do stuff to me or what if she does something to me herself I'm terrified what should I do Story time about how my mom made me shave my hair off. So a little background information, I was 13 years old and in 7th grade. And I had just moved to a new school this year because my grandma was really sick and my family and I needed to take care of her. And for like the first two months, I had a big problem making friends. Until I met my best friends, Ashley and Nicole. Ashley was super sweet and Nicole was kind of a bitch. And I was in between, so we kind of all balanced each other out. But fast forward to later on in the year, we met this one girl named Kelly. And I'm not gonna lie, she was super nice, but really annoying. She would always try to talk to us, always try to hang out with us. She was literally stuck up our asses 24-7. And the one day Ashley convinced Nicole and I to have a sleepover with Kelly and her. So we say yes, and Nicole, Ashley, and I are all texting in the group chat. And Nicole goes, well, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to be nice to her. And she actually said that we were going to play a prank on her. And that's when Ashley bailed because she didn't want to be a part of it. Like for part two. Part two about why my mom made me shave my hair off. So like I said, Ashley bailed because she did not want to be a part of Nicole's evil plan to bully this girl. So fast forward, Nicole and I go over to Kelly's house and I start to feel really bad because Kelly's actually super nice and she wasn't as weird as I thought she was. Fast forward, Kelly's sleeping and Nicole comes over to me and she's like, hey, come to the bathroom with me. So I get up and I go to the bathroom and Nicole pulls out Nair. And I asked her what the hell she's going to do with that. And she was like, oh, I've seen some people do pranks on YouTube. You know, they put it in somebody's shampoo bottle and then it makes them lose their hair. So since I'm the only one who thinks logically, I'm like, Nicole, you cannot fucking do that. And she's like, oh, don't be such a baby. This shit doesn't even work anyways. All the videos that I watched, people only lost like four strands of hair, which made no sense because why the fuck were we going to do it then? Anyways, fast forward. I go to sleep. I wake up in the morning and my mom comes to get me. Like for part three. 
part three about why my mom made me shave my hair off. So like I said, Nicole put the nair in her shampoo and I went to sleep. I decided I was not going to be a part of this little plan. And I wake up in the morning. My mom comes and picks me up. And Ashley's texting me saying, hey, was Nicole nice to Kelly? And I told her about what she did. And Ashley was like, oh my god, that's so fucked up. Like, I'm gonna tell Kelly. And I was like, yeah, I was gonna tell her, but I don't want to get Nicole in trouble. So fast forward to dinner time, my mom gets a call from Kelly's mom. And she was like, Kelly took a shower earlier. She's losing her hair. And Nicole texted Kelly saying that your daughter's the one who put the shit in my daughter's shampoo. So my mom's like, well, how do you know it was my daughter? And she was like, Nicole also said that she saw the Nair bottle in your daughter's backpack. So my mom runs up to my room. She finds the Nair bottle in my stuff, which obviously Nicole put there. But my mom wouldn't listen to me. So eventually she sat me down in the kitchen and shaved my hair. Is it normal that my boyfriend threatened to unalive me and himself if I try to leave him? Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. My boyfriend and I have been together for six years. He's always been very judgmental of everything I do. The clothes I wear, if I wear makeup, if I don't wear makeup, if I'm friendly, if I'm too friendly. He just finds a way to make everything I do bad. He's always been very controlling and very jealous too. But in the past three years, things have gotten even worse. Exactly three years ago, he asked me to marry him and I told him that I just didn't think we were ready. So basically, I said no. He took this as me saying that I didn't want to be with him, that I didn't love him, and that he wasn't good enough for me. Obviously, I don't think any of those things, but I said no because our relationship was not in a good place. I was always constantly scared of him and worried that he would get mad at me. I knew then that that was not a good situation to get married into. I can't imagine how much worse he would be if we actually got married and he felt like he owned me. After the proposal, he became more insecure and wanted to keep tabs on me all the time. Even if I'm going to my parents' house, he still calls me and checks on me if I'm still there. He's even called my mom to ask her where I am. Part two is up. Is it normal that my boyfriend threatened to unalive me and him if I ever tried to leave him? Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. After the time where he called my mom and asked her where I was, my mom got really upset. She told him that he needed to give me space. And as you can imagine, him being already toxic, this made him extremely violent. By the way, at this point, we had only been living together for two months. I came home to a broken TV. Our 75 inch plasma, he decided to throw on the floor. Then he told me that I needed to control my mother and how dare she tell him how he needs to behave. Then he told me that he would never speak to my mother again. I mean, how does he think that this is gonna make me any happier? I called my mom and told her that he had broken the TV and that he was extremely upset at her. My mom demanded that I leave him, but I know it sounds so stupid. I still love him and I do feel bad for him. I know how much he depends on me emotionally. So when I got off the phone, I told him what my mom said. Then he flat out said, if you ever leave me, I will unalive you and then me. Then he punched a hole in a wall. So I went straight to my parents' house. Part three is up. Is it normal that my boyfriend threatened to unalive me and then himself if I ever left him? Disclaimer is not my story time, I sent me on Instagram. After I ran away to my parents' house, he sent me a message saying that he would give me some time. I thought this was a good sign. Maybe he was starting to understand what I needed. I stayed at my parents' house for a week, and that's when I started noticing that he was driving around my neighborhood. If I went to the supermarket, he was there. Eventually, I called him and we made up. He did try to work on his jealousy, which made a huge improvement in our relationship. The only problem is that anytime we would ever get into a fight and I would say that I needed space, he would come back to the same thing. Always say, I will unalive you and then me. He knows that by saying that I'm going to instantly stop the fight, but I'm starting to think that he's not going to do it. And I heard from a guy friend that his girlfriend says the same thing to him. So I'm just wondering if it's just him being dramatic because at this point I'm only with him because of that. I feel bad for him. Part of me is still very attracted to him, but I know that he's just going to continue getting worse. Is this normal or not? What should I do? Story time about my extremely creepy neighbors. So a little background information, I was 12 years old and I was in 6th grade. And my family and I lived in a really small town where everyone knew everyone. But our new neighbors had been building their house next to us for the past 4 years. And finally when they were done with the house, this house was huge. I mean probably because there were like 8 people moving into the house. There was the mom, the dad, 4 kids, and their grandparents. So like eight people. But I was super excited because I was like, okay, this is awesome. I get to meet some new friends. But after two weeks of not seeing anybody playing in the backyard or anybody on the school bus, I started to think that their family was super fucking weird. And everyone in our neighborhood liked to gossip. And everyone was saying how they barely see the people who had just moved in. So my mom decided to take one for the team and make some brownies, take them over to the house. And I ended up going with her. So we go up to the house, we knock on the door. And one of the kids came and opened the door, but the dad ran over and grabbed him like for part two part two about my extremely creepy neighbors 
So like I said, my mom and I took some brownies over there and one of the kids opened the door and when he opened the door, he had a bunch of bruises all over his body. The dad came running over and ripped his son from the door and slammed the door in our faces and all you could hear was him screaming at his son. So my mom and I went to walk away before the door opened and he was like, sorry, my son knows better than to open the door to strangers. So he took the brownies and then I asked him if I could have a sleepover with one of his daughters and he was super hesitant at first, but he said that I could only have a sleepover with her if it was at my house and not theirs, which my mom was completely completely fine with anyways because she thought that it was a little bit weird that his son had bruises covering his whole body so that night when she came over to sleep over my house i asked her how her brother got all those bruises all over his body and she said that he just fell down some stairs but after that we became best friends and we would literally hang out like five times a week until the one day i knocked on their door to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone like for part three Part three about my super creepy neighbors. So like I said, I became best friends with their daughter, but the one day I went over her house to ask if she wanted to come over and her dad answered the door and said that she was gone. And when I asked when she would be back, he was like, she went to go live with her mom. So probably never, which was super weird because she never mentioned that she had another mom. So fast forward two months, my family and I are sitting around the fire pit when we hear someone scream help. But we weren't sure if that's what we were actually hearing because it was so quiet. And then all of a sudden we heard someone banging on my neighbor's basement door. You know those metal doors that people usually have outside of their house that lead down basement steps? Yeah, well that's where the banging was coming from, so my dad hopped over the fence to see if that's where the screaming was coming from also. And then not even a minute later, my dad hopped back over the fence and it looked like he saw a ghost, but he ran inside, called 911. Because I was so young, the only thing my parents told me about that whole situation was that the girl that I was friends with was still alive and her parents were keeping her in the basement along with two of her other siblings, but then we also found out that they weren't even her real parents. They were kidnapped at the hospital when they were born.